we know a covalent bond is formed by the overlapping of atomic orbitals or by sharing of electrons so when we consider a pure covalent bond we think the electrons between the atoms are shared so that the bond is formed between the two atoms but it has observed that some of the molecules are not completely covalent that means the electron is not shared exactly between the two atoms hence we use the term or we introduce a term called polar and non polar covalent bonds so we expect all covalent bonds are non polar but it has observed that there is a partial charge development between the atoms which share a covalent bond such type of covalent bonds are called polar covalent bonds so the terms polar and non polar is to refer the polarity of covalent bonds whenever two atoms share electrons unequally they create a moment called dipole moment why this dipole moment occurs this is because among the two bonded atoms one may be more electronegative than other see here the example i am taking chlorine molecule when i take this chlorine molecule the electronegativity of these two chlorine atoms are same that means the shared pair of electrons will be placed between these two chlorine atoms as a result this chlorine molecule is a non polar covalent compound or chlorine molecule does not have polarity or we could say chlorine molecule is a non polar covalent bond moving to the case of hcl we know hcl is a covalent bond the electron of hydrogen and the electron of chlorine are shared to form a covalent bond but it is observed that chlorine is more electronegative than hydrogen see here this chlorine is more electronegative than hydrogen as a result the chlorine will pulls the shared pair of electron towards its side when the shared pair of electrons are pulled towards chlorine the chlorine will get a partial negative charge why chlorine is pulling the electron towards its side because chlorine is more electronegative than hydrogen so the chlorine will develop a negative charge or partial negative charge while the hydrogen which lose its electron gain a partial positive charge hence we could say in hcl hcl molecule the bond is polar that means there exists a charge between hydrogen and chlorine bond hence it is classified as a polar covalent bond so covalent bond could be of two types they are non polar covalent bonds and polar covalent bonds whether a covalent bond is polar or non polar depends upon the electronegativity difference between the shared atoms now we have to see about a non polar covalent bond 
in a non-polar covalent bond, the electrons are shared equally between the two atoms. That means, in non-polar covalent bonds, the electronegativity of the shared atom is almost the same. See here, when we consider hydrogen molecule, both the hydrogen atoms are having equal electronegativity value. Hence, the shared pair of electrons will be held between the two atoms. So, generally speaking, we could say if the electronegativity difference between two atoms in a covalent bond is less than 0.4 or 0.5, the molecule is nonpolar covalent bond. If the electronegativity difference between the covalently bonded atom is between 0.4 to 1.7 or 0.5 to 1.9, it is a covalent bond with polar character or polar covalent bond. So we have seen covalent bonds could be of two types, polar covalent bond and non-polar covalent bond. And the uneven electron distribution in a polar covalent bond is de designated by delta minus or delta positive. See here, in case of HF molecule, hydrogen is less electronegative than fluorine. As a result, fluorine will attract the shared pair of electron towards its side. So the electron is moving towards the fluorine atom. Hence, fluorine gets a partial negative charge and hydrogen is losing the shared pair of electron thus it gets partial positive charge that means in this particular hf molecule even though it is a covalent bonded molecule there exist two charges in the same molecule that is a partial positive charge on hydrogen and a partial negative charge on fluorine. This charge distribution acts this molecule as a dipole molecule because the same molecule is having two partial positive and negative sign. Hence, Polar covalent molecules act as dipole molecules. So, in any polar covalent molecule, there will be a partial positive and a partial negative charge separation and it is designated as dipole. We have seen covalent molecules could be of two types, polar covalent molecule and non-polar covalent molecule. When we consider a polar covalent molecule, it have a positive charge end and a negative charge end. That means in that particular covalent molecule, there is a charge separation. To measure the polarity of the molecule, we use a term called the dipole moment. Dipole moment is a measure of the polarity of the molecule. And it is defined as the product of the magnitude of one of the charge and the distance separating them. If we consider HCl as an example, Chlorine is more electronegative than hydrogen. As a result, it attracts the shared pair of electrons towards its side. Resulting, chlorine molecule is having a partial negative, sorry, chlorine atom is having a partial negative charge. 
and hydrogen atom is having a partial positive charge. When we multiply the magnitude of this positive or negative charge, which is equal, with the distance separating that dipole or different charge, we will get the dipole moment. Dipole moment has magnitude and direction. The extent of dipole moment is measured by the unit called debay. Or debay is the unit of dipole moment. Greater the electronegativity difference between the atom, greater the dipole moment. Why? Because dipole moment is defined as the product of the magnitude of the charge and the distance separating them. Hence, by measuring the dipole moment of any molecule, we could say how much polarity is present in that molecule. So, dipole moment is the measure of the polarity of the molecule and its unit is the bay. The most important thing is that dipole moment has a magnitude and a direction. See here, in case of HCl, chlorine atom is more electronegative, hence the magnitude is equal, partial positive and partial negative is equal, but the direction is towards chlorine side. Take down. The magnitude of dipole moment is denoted by mu, the Greek letter mu. And mu is equal to Q into R. See the picture there? Where Q is the magnitude of the charge. And R is the distance between the charge centers. And usually this R is the bond distance of that particular molecule. And Q positive will be always equal to Q negative. And always the dipole moment is having a direction. So if we take HCl, HCl is having a dipole moment of 1.3, 1.03 dBa. And it is a vector quantity and could be represented as such. That means we could calculate the dipole moment of any molecule if we know the charge present in that particular molecule and the bond distance or the distance separating them. So, mu, that is the dipole moment, E expressed in dPa unit is equal to one of the charge, magnitude of one of the charge multiplied by the distance separating them or the bond length in that particular By substituting the value of Q and distance R, we could get 1 dB is equal to 10 raised to minus ESU centimeter. ESU centimeter. So the SI unit of dB is coulomb meter and 1 dB is equal to 3.336 into 10 raised to minus 30 coulomb meter. So we should identify 1 dB is equal to 3.336 into 10 raised to minus 30 coulomb meter. Or it is equal to 10 raised to minus 18 ESU centimeter. This is the CGS unit. This is the SI unit. We were discussing about the partial ionic character present in the covalent molecule. When the covalent molecules have different atoms with different electronegativity, 
a charge separation occurs resulting in the formation of a partial negative and a partial positive charge on different atoms if partial positive and partial negative charges are coming on different atoms we could say the molecule is polar covalent molecule and it have a particular amount of ionic character now we could calculate the percentage ionic character present in any covalent molecule the percentage ionic character could be easily calculated in any covalent molecule if it is a polar covalent molecule see the equation is that percentage ionic character is equal to observed dipole moment divided by calculated dipole moment into 100 when we calculate the dipole moment we assume it is a 100 percentage ionic compound so a compound we will find out the dipole moment and we will calculate or compute the dipole moment considering it is a 100 percentage ionic compound then we multiply it by 100 this will give you the percentage ionic character of any polar covalent molecule thus we have seen covalent molecules have certain percentage of ionic character or we could say for any covalent molecule if there is a charge separation due to electronegativity difference the molecule is polar and that molecule is associated with a dipole moment which is a vector quantity but when we consider a molecule having different bonds that means more than one bond then we have to consider the polarity of the molecule by considering the dipole moment of all the bond for example if i take ch4 molecule methane in methane ch4 we have four for you are four carbon hydrogen bonds and we know there is electronegative difference between carbon and hydrogen if we consider ccl4 carbon tetrachloride carbon is the central atom and there is four chlorine atom and each chlorine atom attract the shared pair of electron from the carbon that means all the four carbon chlorine bonds are polar even though ccl4 is expected to be a covalent molecule ccl4 is a covalent molecule but since chlorine is present it is having four dipole moments so the net dipole moment of a molecule is predicted by the structure of that particular covalent molecule some covalent molecules have net dipole moment some covalent molecules does not have net dipole moment there will be dipole moment but when we consider the whole molecule there will not be any dipole so by studying the structure or geometry of the molecule we could say whether the molecule is having net dipole moment or no. So, we could say a polar bond is a must for a molecule to have dipole moment. But net dipole moment is predicted by the geometry of the molecule also. Take down.
Consider the example of carbon dioxide, CO2. When we consider CO2 molecule, oxygen is more electronegative than carbon. As a result, the carbon oxygen bond is polar. Why it is polar? Because oxygen is more electronegative than carbon. As a result, oxygen attracts the shared pair of electrons from the carbon. Hence, the carbon gains a partial positive charge and oxygen gains a partial negative charge. Since dipole moment is a vector quantity, we could show the direction of the dipole moment. See here, this is carbon dioxide molecule. This is carbon and oxygen. There is a charge separation. Carbon is having a partial positive, oxygen is having a partial negative. So, this direction of the bond is towards this direction. See here. Similarly, we have another part. There also we have a carbon and oxygen. The same thing happens there. There exists a dipole moment. And the direction of the dipole moment is opposite to the direction of dipole moment of another C double bond. And the magnitude is equal. Hence, the dipole moment of positive direction gets cancelled with the dipole moment of negative direction. That means we expect carbon dioxide molecule is having a net dipole moment. But the dipole moments are cancelling each other acting in the opposite direction. Equal forces acting in opposite direction. Hence, for carbon dioxide molecule, overall or net dipole moment is found to be zero. So, there exists polar character in carbon dioxide molecule or carbon dioxide is a polar covalent molecule. But the next dipole moment gets cancelled in the opposite direction. Hence, the net dipole moment of carbon dioxide is zero. Even though carbon oxygen bond is polar. So you could expect a question, why the net dipole moment of carbon dioxide is zero? Even it is having dipole moment between carbon and oxygen. The answer is that in carbon dioxide, the structure or the symmetry or the geometry is linear. Hence, the dipole moment acting in the opposite direction, they get cancelled in the different direction. So, a net molecule is having zero net dipole moment. Very, very important. Now consider another example, water molecule, H2O. H2O is a molecule in which two hydrogen atoms are connected to oxygen atom. As a result, oxygen is more electronegative than hydrogen. Hence, the lone pair of straight pair of electrons will be attracted towards the oxygen atom. That is, the bond pair of electrons between oxygen and hydrogen will be attracted towards oxygen. Similarly, here also another oxygen-hydrogen bond is there. Oxygen-hydrogen bond is there. So, oxygen is more electronegative than hydrogen. So, shared pair of electrons is attracted towards this direction. So, in net effects, if we think H2O as a linear molecule, the net dipole moment would have been zero. But the shape of H2O molecule is inverted V shape. So, here is one vector, here is another vector. So, these two vectors are of acting same direction, see this direction. Same direction, that of oxygen. Hence, 
H2 molecule is having net dipole moment. So we could say for carbon dioxide molecule, there is no net dipole moment. But for H2O molecule, is, there is net dipole moment. Answer is very simple. In case carbon dioxide, in case of carbon dioxide, the molecule is linear and hence the dipole moment cancels each other. While in the case of water molecule, the dipole moments are in a particular angle. Hence, the resultant will be down to the structure or geometry of the molecule. Hence, water molecule is basically dang basically water molecule is having basically net dipole moment. Net dipole moment. See that arrow mark? Here, oxygen hydrogen bond. Oxygen is more electronegative. So the vector direction is this direction. Here another direction. So two vectors acting in particular angle. So the net dipole moment is in this direction. You got it. See here oxygen hydrogen. This is a vector addition. So oxygen hydrogen this direction. This oxygen hydrogen this direction. So the net dipole moment is perpendicular to this one. That is why water molecule is having net dipole moment. The geometry of water molecule is not linear. It is inverted V-shape. So we could say the geometry of the molecule is an important factor which affects the net dipole moment of the molecule. Take down. See another example, ammonia molecule. Nitrogen is more electronegative than hydrogen. As a result, see three dipole moments are acting at a particular angle. So the net direction, net direction is towards this direction. This direction. You got it. So NH3 molecule is having net dipole moment. Net dipole moment. Similarly, NF3 molecule. NF3 molecule. In NF3 molecule, fluorine is more electron than nitrogen. Hence, the arrow direction is downwards. Downwards. The resulting will be downward direction. Here, nitrogen is more electron than hydrogen. So, the resulting will be in the upward direction. Got it. Take down. See some examples here. This is tetrachloromethane. Tetrahedral shape. Tetrahedral shape. So, what happens? One chlorine atom, this chlorine atom, and this chlorine atom. They have net dipole moment in the opposite direction of this chlorine atom. So, this is a tetrahedral shape. So, the dipole moment resulting due to three will be cancelled by another one. Hence, tetrachloromethane net dipole moment is zero. Because all the four chlorine atoms in different direction and their net dipole moment cancels each other. But moving to, see, dichloromethane. Dichloromethane. Here two chlorine atoms have net dipole moment. While carbon hydrogen and carbon hydrogen is having small partial covalent character. Partial ionic character, sorry, partial ionic character. Hence, dichloromethane is having a net dipole moment in this direction, that blue arrow direction. See here, blue arrow direction. So, depending upon the geometry of the molecule and how the atoms are arranged in that particular molecule, the resulting molecule could or could not have net dipole moment. Net dipole moment. 
basically linear molecules does not have dipole moments but tetrahedral molecules does not tetrahedral molecule also does not have uh, dipole moments if all the four atoms substituted are same as in the case of tetrachloromethane all the four atoms are chlorine if the substituents are different or attached atoms are different in the tetrahedral structure as in the case of dichloromethane there will be a net dipole moment see another example cis and trans cis and trans just see here in the case of cis molecule the both the chlorine atoms are on the same side so vector direction for this carbon chlorine is this direction while that of this is in this particular downward direction so there is a net dipole moment for cis molecule but for trans molecule it just get cancelled each other so for trans on to dichloroethane ethene there is no net dipole moment while for cis there is a net dipole moment these are important questions for your examinations some examples are given here you check here i am showing the arrow and the violet arrow indicates the net dipole moment for bcl3 molecule there is no net dipole moment while for formaldehyde there is a net dipole moment ammonia there is net dipole moment but for carbon tetrachloride there is no net dipole moment sf6 no net dipole moment then trigonal bipyramidal that is pf5 no net dipole moment while for chloroform chcl3 is having net dipole moment take down the molecule and predict the net dipole moment just check the molecules and predict the net dipole moments. 